Grace and peace to you in the name of our Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to worship in the expanded community of First Presbyterian Church San Anselmo. We're so glad you're here. Um, welcome to worship on this um, long and hot Fourth of July weekend. Oh my goodness. It was so hot yesterday, I think I officially qualify as a weather wimp. <laughs> And I grew up in Alabama. I should know how to handle this heat. Um, but yeah, we are gathered today as we are aware that uh, we, we are moving towards Tuesday, where as a nation we'll celebrate um, the freedoms that we have in this country, um, also mindful of all of the other nations in the world, um, praying for their freedom and their peace as well. We're moving through this summer with a theme of the Psalms, so I thought it was appropriate to turn this, this Sunday to a group of Psalms that address the nations. So usually, we, when we think of the Psalms, we think of the Psalms that speak to us personally, and we love those and we cherish those. We did a couple of those, Psalm 23, Psalm 121. But these are these um, odd ones that speak to kings and nations. So we'll play a little bit with that. This is new to me, the first time I've read the Psalms, so let's set out on this adventure together. But friends, as we gather here in this nation, um, in this moment, in this time, gathered together in the presence of God, worshiping God who we come to know in Jesus Christ. Let us all affirm this is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God. And I'm going to invite Lisa to come and lead us in our call to worship. Good morning, everyone. As we gather together, please join me in the call to worship. O oh God, who called all life into being. The earth, the earth sea, sea, and sky are yours. Your presence is all around us. Every atom is filled with your energy. Your spirit enlivens all who walk the earth. With her, we yearn for justice to be done. For creation to be freed from bondage. For the hungry to be fed. For the captives to be released. For your reign of peace to come on earth. Come, let us worship God maker of the heavens and earth. Let's worship God, and, I, and to do that as we begin, I invite us to rise in body or spirit as we sing together our opening hymn, From All That Dwell Below the Skies. It's hymn number 327.
join me in prayer as we confess our need for God. Sovereign God, in this world where goodness and evil continue to clash with each other, instill in us and in all your people discernment to see what is right, courage to do what is right, and love to live a life that blesses and heals the world. Keep us aware of the subtlety and complexity of sin and the ways we hurt each other by action, inaction, and complicity in systems that do harm. Forgive us, heal us, set us free through the power of your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Please join me as we affirm and give thanks for God's abounding grace. Friends, it is for the freedom that Christ has set us free, freedom from all our brokenness, freedom from all that pushes us down or holds us back, freedom to work for the freedom of all people, everyone, everywhere, all the time. In the spirit, alive in the body of Christ, we are forgiven, loved, and set free. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Alleluia. Amen. And assuring ourselves of that grace, this is the part in our service where we exchange signs and words of peace with each other. So the first thing I'm going to do we're going to try and see if we can uh, do this a little differently as I am going to spotlight our in-person congregation and the choir at the same time <laughs> so that we all can wave to our friends online. Look at that. It worked. Well, I, I can see the first row. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, we got more in there. We were a little bit more inclusive. Um, and if you're online in just a moment, I will unmute your microphones or let you unmute your microphone so that you can exchange words of peace with each other. As here in this room, we exchange words and signs of peace with each other. Friends, may the peace of Christ be with you. Okay, you should be able to unmute yourselves. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Chris. Good morning. Good morning. Chris. Good morning, and peace be with you. Peace. It was peace. Peace, peace John. Good morning, and me, Catherine. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good to morning. See you there, Joe. You're muted, Joe. Peace, Georgia. Peace. Peace, Courtney. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see yeah. you. Morning, Sita. Morning. Peace to you, Janice and Benjamin. Peace, I love it. Hi, Lisa. Hi, man. Red sweater, Joe. <laughs> oh, she's looking sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Good morning, Chris. Peace be with you, Joe. Good afternoon, Carol. <laughs> Lisa. Yeah, thank you. I can't see you, but you're there. And a I'm hot actress, Lisa. Yeah. <laughs> impressive to have so many people online when it's so hot. I thought everybody would be like sitting in a cold bathtub or something. <laughs> but the people with their pictures off are sitting in the bathtub. <laughs> I get, yeah. And it depends on where you are, right? Because up here in San Rafael, it's really hot already. Yeah, I think it's just going to be really warm. It was over 100 degrees here yesterday. Dad came to visit. And it was like, ah, we didn't even go outside. Fingers crossed. It stays cool today. I didn't go outside yesterday either.
What wonderful sounds of peace as we settle back into our seats. Um, this is the time that is especially for our children, so this time is for you. June, Everett, Anders, Cece, Paula, Andrew, Titus, Nora, Cecilia, Phoebe, Quentin, Hannah, Isaac, Frank, Gwen, Olivia, Charlotte, Elle, Ashley, Nate, Theo, Claire, Gavin, whether you are a child or a child at heart, whether you are in this room or whether you're worshiping with us at home, uh, this time is for you. Uh, so come on up, come on up. Great, and for the folks online, did I get everything? Are you hearing me? Can I get a thumbs up from Mary, Mary Catherine? Great, thank you very much. Excellent, so this is, I understand, Andrew, Titus, oh, and Nora with an H. Who do we have? We have Nora and Titus. Titus. Great to see you. Come on, sit down. Sit, have a seat. Great. Excellent. So, um, do you know what the holiday is that's coming up? I'm Scott, by the way. Fourth of July. Oh, my gosh. What do we celebrate on the Fourth of July? Fireworks. Fireworks. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. We're going to uh, celebrate fireworks. We're going to barbecue. We're going to have a good time. And we think about our country our nation and celebrate the freedoms that we have. So I brought, I've got a quiz for us. I've got some flags here. Can you pick out the flag of our country? <laughs> Boom, yes, that's the flag of the United States. Excellent. You know, and just like we think about that flag and what it means to us, there are so many other countries out there. And I know that I am talking to folks who know about other countries. Um, that, 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 you know, that celebrate their life together too. So I brought some flags from countries I've been to, and I thought we would ask and see if people know where, what the country is. Hmm. And you, it's not just you, we'll ask everybody, okay? So here's one, does anybody know what this is from? Romania. Germany, oh. I think. <laughs> we'll have to ask Jeff. Jeff, is this from Germany? Yes, it's a thumbs up. It may not be the most current German flag, as you'll see in one of these other things. So this is one, this is one I love. I've been there several times. What is this? Close. It's not Italy. It is. You're right. If it was Italy, this would be red. Very good. I always get them confused. It looks red. Okay. Italy will qualify, and if it were orange, it would be Ireland. Great. The Republic of. The Republic of Ireland. Now, this one, country, I checked technically, um, but it's part of another nation. Does anybody know this? Scotland, you Presbyterians better know this one. And this one is, this is a trick question. Anybody know what this is? Is it Wales? You're so close. I thought it was Wales. I thought it was Wales. It's another Scottish flag. Yeah, this is an old Scottish flag, an old Scottish flag. So um, I'm, I've got a couple more on my computer, but Titus and Nora, where do you live right now? Where are you living? Oh, but you, don't you live in Morocco? Oh, you've lived in Morocco, right? So you've lived in Morocco and you're moving to a place that starts with a T, right? Where's that? Tunisia. Tunisia. So I wish I'd known that because I would have I gotten flags from Tunisia and Morocco. That's so exciting to have you here. And here's a couple other flags that I put on here because we have other people in our family who were born in these countries. So can anybody tell me? We'll go left to right. What's that one on the far left? Where's that from? Japan, and the middle one, United Kingdom, yes, and so we know that um, Miss Maureen, who's with us sometimes, that's where she's from, and she and Ralph, I think, are actually there in Northern Ireland, which is part of United Kingdom, and the one on the far right, where's that from? Argentina, exactly. So, you know, <laughs> I got you covered, I got you covered, brother. Okay, so, you know, I thought we'd, um, I'd show you all of these flags because, you know, we're talking about our country in church. And just a reminder that God is the God of all the nations, not just ours, and that God loves people everywhere. God loves people in Germany and Japan and Argentina and Tunisia and Morocco. God loves us right here in the United States. So, um, yeah, so happy Fourth of July and uh, happy, um, and you know, if you, you, you want to keep that flag, you can. <laughs> yeah, I bought it special for this. You, can, you all can take it home if you want to, or take it to Tunisia if you want to. Or you can leave it. These are relatives of Lindsay. You can leave it with Lindsay if you want to. 
So we do something called the pretzel prayer to close out. And so I'm going to ask Miss Joan to help me with this. And you can join in. And you all have to help me remember the words because I'm used to just playing along with this. So let's stand up. And we'll, it goes like this. God, I love you. Help me to love others as you love me. Amen. It's so good to meet you. We're so glad you're here. If you'd like, Miss Joan is, uh, will have some time with the kids out there, and then she'll bring everybody back in time for communion. Okay, great. Okay. Carl, did I handle all of my tech things? Are we set? Okay, good. Good, good, good. So as I said, we will... Um, on this, as we approach this national holiday, we're going to turn to some psalms of the nations. And because we're talking about nations, we're talking about our public life. And uh, they particularly have something to say about how we um, use and allocate power in our public life. So we've got a New Testament text. The choir will sing a psalm. And then we'll hear Psalm 72, which is the one I'll preach on. But you may want to listen for what each one has to say about power. Where's the power in the text? Our first scripture reading this morning is Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. If then there is any comfort in Christ, any consolation from love, any partnership in the Spirit, any tender affection and sympathy, make my joy complete be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or empty conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interest, but to the interest of others. Let the same mind be in you that was Christ Jesus, who, though he existed in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, assuming human likeness. And being found in appearance as a human, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God exalted him even more highly and gave him the name that is above every other name so that the name given to Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, our parent.
Our second scripture today is from Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a king's son. May he judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people and the hills in righteousness. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people, give deliverance to the needy, and crush the oppressor. May he live with the, while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May he be like rain that falls on mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May he have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May all kings fall down before him and all nations render service. For he delivers the needy when they call, the poor and those who have no helper. He has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy and saves from oppression and violence. He redeems their life and precious is their blood in his sight. May his name endure forever, his fame continue as long as the sun. May all nations be blessed in him, may they pronounce him happy. Blessed be God, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be God's glorious name forever. May God's glory fill the whole earth. Amen and amen. We celebrate the written word of scripture. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. We celebrate the living word, Christ among us. Thanks. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. God of all nations, God made known to us in Jesus Christ, God present with us now, open our hearts as we encounter your word that we might come to life for you. Amen. So we are going to keep going with our quiz theme. And today's sermon starts with a quiz. Just one question. It's going to be one true false question. I'll read the statement. I'll give you just a few moments and I'll read it again. And then I will ask you for the answer. You can do this. Are you ready? Here it is, true or false. God thinks that kings are a great idea. Think about it, think about it. God thinks that kings are a great idea. True or false? false. Correct. False, false, false. God does not in any way, shape, or form think that kings are great or even a good idea. Do you remember? I think we've uh, looked at this story twice uh, since I've been here. Um, it's an odd one to have as a favorite, but it is. Um, after the people have settled in the land, the people tell the prophet Samuel, go and ask God for a king. We want a king. And God says, no way. Are you kidding? That's a horrible idea. Think about what kings do. A king will take your sons and daughters, your children, and press them into hard labor. He'll send your sons off to war. A king will take your grain and your livestock. You don't need a king. You just need me, God, you and me, the way the world should be. And the people say, thanks, but no thanks. Give us a king. Give us a king so that we can be like all of the other nations. And God says, okay, Samuel, the prophet, Give them what they ask for. And the people get a king, king after king after king. It is the history that we read for the rest of the Old Testament. And the kings are, with rare exception, pretty lousy. There's David and Solomon who are at times are lifted up because at least they governed over an undivided nation. And so sometimes the people look back at the glory days, their glory days. But you know, the Bible has plenty to say about their flaws. 
and there's Josiah, and maybe Hezekiah who try to do better. But other than that, the kings do exactly what God says they would. They do what kings do. And the people are left suffering, living a bare subsistence living, the judicial system corrupted by power, constantly under threat of invading armies. It's into that history, that reality that the prophets come and speak. It's into that history, that reality that the people sing this morning's psalm. Psalm 72 is what is called a royal psalm. We've talked about how the Psalms speak to the whole of life. Well, this group of Psalms speaks into our public life. How the people, the nation, orders its economic, judicial, political systems. How it allocates its resources. Who thrives, who hungers, who survives, who perishes. Who has the power and how do they use it? These Psalms speak to and about sovereignty and power. Now, because in their world, the king has sovereignty, these psalms are addressed to the king. They seek the king's well-being in the hope that he will structure a world that supports and protects the well-being of the people. May the king live while the sun endures. May he be like rain that falls on the mown grass. In his days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound. Now, they may feel strange to us, these psalms sung to a king. We don't hear these royal psalms often in church, but think of it this way. These psalms sing about sovereignty and power and how they are used. So in a monarchy, you sing to and about the king because the king is the one who has the sovereignty and the power. In a democracy, we say that sovereignty lies in the people. We the people, a government of the people, by the people, for the people. So if we were to sing these psalms to the sovereign in our world, in our nation, in our democracy, we would sing them to and about us, we the people. These royal psalms sing into the national life of a people, first sung long ago to and about a king. We don't hear them often, but maybe it makes sense to listen to this psalm for a nation on a weekend when we observe our national holiday, to listen to them from the ancient world of kings into this present moment, into this democratic nation, this republic. Now, before we do that, Uh, Maybe we should back up just a bit and say that before this psalm is about the sovereignty of nations and kings, this psalm is first and foremost about the sovereignty of God. Before they say anything to or about the king, these royal psalms stand confident that God is sovereign all the time, everywhere. Psalm 72 begins, God, give your judgments to the king your righteousness to the king's son, and it ends, God alone does wondrous things. Standing there, this psalm sings to the king and the people the world God wants. May justice flourish and peace abound for this nation and for all nations. We think that this Psalm 72 may have actually been a coronation psalm. So you can imagine it as a song sung to the king as the king became king. It's both a prayer and a charge. Instructions. It not only prays a blessing for the king, but it also charges the king with how to be king. It sets God's standard for the king. And the standard really couldn't be more clear. The standard focuses on two things, two ways that kings or any sovereign might exercise power. There are right, just judgments. A judicial system that hears the complaints of the people and decides fairly and justly. And then righteousness. The right structuring of the systems the people inhabit so that everyone can thrive. The structuring of the world for justice. And the standard 
For all that, the one that this psalm articulates then rolls out like this. May the king govern your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May he defend the cause of the poor of the people. May he deliver the needy and end all oppression. May the king deliver the needy when they call. May he rescue the poor and those who have no helper. May he have compassion on the weak and the needy. May he save the lives of the needy. May he redeem the lives of the vulnerable from all oppression and violence again and again. And then that beautiful line, after all that sung on behalf of the poor and the vulnerable and the marginalized, the psalm sings this to the king, may their blood be precious in your sight. May their lives be precious in your sight. May the lives and well-being of the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized be at the heart of everything you do O oh, king. One writer puts it like this. In this psalm, the only stated responsibility of the king is to establish justice for the oppressed and to rescue the poor and the needy. This is a psalm for the king and for the people. It is a psalm that sings the world God wants. They sang it at coronations and then they sang it again and again in their life together. A reminder of the one standard for kings, for any sovereign, the one standard for how we live and structure our lives together in nations and communities. How are you doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized? in the judgments rendered in your courts, in your systems that allocate resources, that establish rights and responsibilities? How are you doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized? It is the standard for kings and for everyone entrusted with power in our public life, entrusted with power for the public good, for the well-being of all people. And if you think about it, that standard has more than a little resonance with what was articulated at the founding of this nation in the Declaration of Independence. As they broke from a king who too often did the things that kings do, they wrote this. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all people are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. And among those rights are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now we know that when the founders articulated those truths back then, they weren't a reality for all people. The founders protected slavery. And you know that I changed that a little bit. The declaration actually reads, all men are created equal. It's better understood as all people. But these rights and freedoms were slow coming over our history. They were slow coming to women. Our national work over all these years has been in large part struggling to make those truths more real. So as we celebrate this weekend, the truths we claimed back then, and as we think about the psalm, it might be good to ask, so how are we doing? Two weeks ago, the Supreme Court issued a decision in a case brought by the Navajo Nation. The history of this nation's relationship with indigenous tribes and nations is a history of treaties made and broken, made and broken again and again. This case involved the treaty that established the Navajo Res Reservation and as Robin explained to us in last week's Sunday seminar, among other things, that treaty uh, under that treaty, the U.S., the United States government, holds in trust the water rights of the Navajo Nation. It's a fiduciary relationship. They hold it in trust. That water, as water in so many places, is now scarce. And the Navajo people asked for an accounting of those water rights. Where do we stand? And the federal government said that it had no obligation to do that. And the United States Supreme Court, a majority of them, agreed. 
Justice Gorsuch's, Gorsuch's dissent is worth a read. Now here's Scott Clark saying to read Gor Justice Gors Gorsuch. How are we doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized in our midst? Just a few weeks ago, as we observed Juneteenth, we talked again about the continuing harm that persists through American systems of racial injustice. This past week, the Supreme Court took away one tool for addressing continual, continuing racial disparities in colleges and universities, the consideration of race and the impact of racism as one factor, among others, in college admissions. How are we doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized in our midst? Today, there are millions of folks, millions of families who are hurting following the court's decision on student loan forgiveness. Now, that case was ultimately about presidential power, and so the court may actually have had a point about the limits of that power. We want the president to have limits on their power, um, whoever they are. But what does it say about our nation where so many, if not most, lower income and middle class families can only send their kids to college by taking on the burden of crushing debt? How are we doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized in our midst? And of course, there's the decision Friday that gave business own, a business owner an exception to generally applicable civil rights laws so that she could refuse service to LGBTQIA plus couples in our families because she believes our marriage is to be, as she says, false. I don't even know what that means. How are we doing with regard to the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized in our midst. The people sang this psalm for the nations at the coronation of the king. And they kept on singing it long after the kings were gone. Long after the king's regimes had collapsed and the next empire had rolled in with its power over, they kept singing this psalm, persisting in the hope for the world God wants, a world that comes alongside the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized, a world where righteousness might flourish and peace abound, a world where everyone, everyone thrives. We receive this psalm from them and hear it today in our world. We hear it in a faith tradition that sees Jesus as sovereign, not through power over, but as the Philippian scripture said, by coming alongside humanity, by entering into humanity fully and completely, and particularly coming alongside the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. And we hear this psalm today, we hear it in our world in the systems and structures that we inhabit and that we shape this government of the people by the people and for the people and so as people of faith living in this nation as we hear this psalm for all the nations we could with just a subtle shift of pronoun make its prayer and its charge our own. O oh God, in our life together, may we defend the poor. May we deliver the needy and end all oppression. May we help the needy when they call. May we rescue the poor and those who have no helper. May we have compassion on the weak and the needy. May we save the lives of the needy. May we redeem the lives of the vulnerable from all oppression and violence. The poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized, may their lives be precious in our eyes. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all people are created equal that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights and that those rights include the right to life and to liberty 
and to the pursuit of happiness. May we find the work that is ours to do to make these truths more true every day in the life we live and the world we shape together. And as we think about the life of nations and all the nations, um, we pivot now and we turn to this table. This table that is for everyone, everyone everywhere, every time, all the nations all around the world. It's said of this table, this table that Jesus first set and at which he first gathered his friends and his disciples, it said that this is the table that, to which people will come from east and west and north and south to feast in the reign of our sovereign God. Friends, this table is for us and for all people. It is for you. Won't you come? And as we say our prayer together, we're going to introduce a new call and response that we're going to do this month and in August. It's one that's familiar. There'll be points in the service where I will say, give thanks to God for God is good. And then you say, God's steadfast love endures forever. Let's try it. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's, God's steadfast, steadfast love endures, endures forever. forever. It's Psalm 118 and a couple other psalms. Christ be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy God, maker of heaven and earth, you are our refuge and our strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. We remember and give thanks for your steadfast love and faithfulness. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's, God's steadfast, steadfast love endures, love endures forever. forever. When the people were in slavery, you brought them to a place of freedom. When the people wandered in the desert, you brought them bread from heaven and water from the rock. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. When the people found themselves in exile, you brought them home. When you restored their fortunes, their mouths were filled with laughter, their tongues songs of joy. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. When we were most in need, you came to us in Jesus Christ. In Jesus Christ, you were and are present in the fullness of humanity. In all of our pain, in all of our joy, in our laughter and in our tears, in all of life, even unto death, even then bringing us back into life with you and all creation. In the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you save us from all that would do us harm. Great is the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Astonishing one, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these your gifts of loaf and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and life of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, that we may be one with all who share this feast, with all your children in every nation, united across every boundary and border. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm. As we gather in this place with God so near, uh, we open up a time of silent prayer, so as we sit here in a moment of silence together, you're invited to um, offer up the prayers that are on your heart to God. Let us be in prayer. United across the generations with all believers in every time and place, we lift our voices with their voices, praying as Jesus taught his friends to pray, saying, Our Father, Mother, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night before he died, Jesus gathered his friends at the table and he took bread and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup and he poured it out and said, this is my blood, my life poured out for you. Drink, all of you. For friends, as often as we do break this bread and drink this cup, we do show forth the saving death of Jesus until Christ comes again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And Scripture says that as they left that table, they sang a psalm and went out into the night. Maybe the psalm included these words. Give thanks to God, for God is good. God's steadfast love endures forever. Now, friends, if, if you're in this space, in just a moment, we'll have a couple of stations that you can come up and get communion. And you can remember that the way, way that we're doing this now is you can come up and, and, and get the bread and take the bread. And then you'll get the cup and drink the cup and you can leave the cup there. I'm going to ask the servers to come forward. And so if you're in this room, uh, you can feel free to start coming forward. And Joan, you can let the kids come on forward. They can come forward first. And if you are um, at home, you can take your bread. And friends, this is the body of Christ for you. This is the cup of salvation for you. Thanks be to God.
anyone need to have it brought to you? Please pray with me. Loving God, thank you for the gift of communion and union in you across distance and time from every nation and every time. We are gathered together in you, one body, the body of Christ, to bless and serve the world you love. Amen. 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 Well, again, welcome. We are so glad you're here. Um, a special welcome to those who are visiting with us for the first time or one of your first times. Uh, we hope that as you experience this community, you'll experience a community of diverse spirituality so that you know that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, wherever you are, there is a place for you here. Um, this is just the start of our week on Sunday, the first moment that we get to be together in worship. We have a number of other opportunities to come together in worship. Immediately after church, there'll be time online where you can talk with each other, and we have coffee over in Duncan Hall, so you're welcome to come and join us there. And then over the course of the week, we have opportunities to be together in prayer. And so I'll ask John to go ahead and put those up. Um, you'll re you may remember <clears throat> that during the summer of the Psalms, one of the new practices or opportunities that we're introducing is Tuesdays at 7 a.m. You can join us for morning prayer. Um, it's a quiet time. Um, it's a brief time for prayer, 20 to 30 minutes, um, but just a time to join in the rhythm of folks across the centuries and around the world who pray the Psalms at regular moments of the day. So you can join us on Tuesday at 7 a.m. Uh, and it's actually on, if you're online, it's on our regular worship uh, Zoom link. So you can just go to the homepage, click that, because I know at seven o'clock you don't want to have to find things and make too many decisions. Uh, you can join us at seven for morning prayer. We have our regular opportunities. Uh, Wednesdays we have our transition support group. Uh, on Thursdays we have centering prayer in the uh, memorial garden at 9.30 and then in the afternoon online I host a time of prayer and connection. And then uh, our exercise group meets Mondays and Thursdays. And are there any cancellations in any of that for the holidays? Nothing's on Tuesday, so we're all good. All of that is happening. You can join in all of that. And then also notice, um, can you go, yeah, the, and the captions are covering it here, but at the bottom, we've got the book group. Um, the book group that meets every Monday. I can't see the time, Erica. Three o'clock? Three o'clock on Zoom. Talk to Erica if you want to find more about it, but they're getting ready to start a book. Um, they read nonfiction books and have 
get it ready and have conversations. So talk to Erica. We wanted to lift that up and make sure that everybody knew about that opportunity. Then through the course of the week, we have plenty of opportunities to be together doing our justice work. Um, we're always uh, thinking of ways we can engage our commitment to anti-racism. Um, this past month, we, we celebrated Juneteenth and, and joined the folks in Marin City doing that. Um, but also all the time, every day, uh, you can come and bring groceries to our community refrigerator and um, uh, folks come and get whatever they need. So bring what you can, leave it there, and folks will come and, and, and get what they need. Um, in addition to our times to be together to pray and to serve, we also um, offer up our resources. Um, we take a time, we'll take up an offering in this room and online. You can, can, you can give online or you can send your, continue to send your offering in. But we do this as a spiritual practice kind of pooling our resources, knowing that we can do more together uh, than we can ever do alone and giving God back just a little bit of what's entrust, been entrusted to our care. It's the first Sunday of the month. So on the first Sunday, we always lift up one of our, our particular offerings, uh, the deacon's offering. So if you want to designate some of your offering to the deacon's fund, what that does is it's a, a fund that is available when particular needs arise in the congregation. When somebody has an uh, a setback or something they didn't expect, that person, you, can come to the deacons and ask for help. That's what it's there for. We hope you will. You would just have to let Lisa or Mary Waitchen or Joni Jacobson or me know. We would treat it confidentially, but this is the opportunity to put some resources into that so it's there when people need. Um, friends, uh, as we take up our offering, we also offer our prayers of gratitude. We have so many things for which we're grateful. And you can go ahead and switch the slide, John. Yeah. And one of them is our nation. Um, the freedoms that we experience here, we will celebrate those on Tuesday, but take time. Um, we live this life imperfectly, and you hear me talk about that a lot, um, uh, pointing out the ways that we might do better, that we can engage the systems, but we can only do that because we live in a nation that, that has those freedoms to do that. So we can give thanks for that. We can give thanks for every other part of our lives uh, as we receive our morning offering here. Friends, let's receive the morning offering and also offer God our prayers of thanks. Amen. Thank you, Natsuko. 
Friends, let's rise in body or spirit as we sing together our closing hymn number 340. This is my song. Uh, the tune may be familiar. It's Finlandia. Um, it's a prayer and a song for all the nations. We hope that you'll join us for coffee hour. Um, but now let us go. Let us go to come alongside the poor, the vulnerable, and the marginalized. And together to create the world that God wants, where righteousness might flourish and peace abound. And as we go, know that we go Christ above us, Christ below us, Christ behind us, Christ before us, Christ beside us and all around us, Christ within us, go in peace.